for the board. Thank you, sir. We are we are fortunate to have a speaker like you. Yeah, Sriharsha. You can go ahead, sir. We can come. Okay, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Shall we move, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Wait for two more minutes. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. We'll uh, right. start. So seven will start. My audio is clear, sir. Yeah, clear, sir. Clear, sir. Okay, sir. Fine, sir. This is the second session, sir. <clears throat> we have started academic series from yeah, last. Yeah, yeah. With the CTPNS, this is the second yes, session. Yes, yes, I attended that last time, sir. Please, sir. Oh, sir. thank you so much, sir. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good evening, all the respected members of AY Telangana as well as from different parts of the country. And uh, on behalf of AY Telangana, I invite Dr. Nilesh Mahajan, sir, from Bangalore to give a, a lecture on CT temporal bone basics. Sir, Nilesh, sir, this. Yes, sir. You can go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I thank all the team members of. Uh... All India Associations of Otorhinolaryngologists of Telangana State for giving me this wonderful opportunity. So I'll share my screen now. Yeah. Okay, sir. So if anything is there, sir, you can interrupt me in between. Questions uh, we will take in the end, sir. Uh, during presentation, if something happens, uh, voice is not coming or you are not able to see the cursor. Yes, yes, sir. Then you can interrupt me. Even Sri Arsha, you can also yeah. interrupt me. And questions we will take in the end then. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, sir. Sure, sir. Yes. I so will start my presentation, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. So the HRCT temporal bone, it is an essential learning for every otologist. So we will move ahead with the chapter one, that is the beginning. So myself, Dr. Nilesh Mahajan, I have done DNB and fellowship in otology and currently I am working as a consultant at Vijay ENT Care Center which is a super specialty otology center in Bangalore, India. So these are my alma maters, Vijay Medical College Pune where I did MBBS, Government Medical College that is RCSM Government Medical College Kolhapur I did my PG, DNB, Jain Medical College and Care University I have done my fellowship and of course my alma mater currently is Vijay ENT Care Center where I am presently working. Under the hood of Professor Dr. H. Vijendra, I have done that fellowship under KL University. So these are my two gurus. Professor Vijendra doesn't need any explain uh, any introduction to himself. He's the well-known otologist all over the world. 
i want to introduce my radiological teacher dr c r ramchandra so he is a consultant radiologist in bangalore so we going in front of both of them i'll start my lecture so how to learn hrct temporal bone this is actually a story uh, how i myself have learned the radiology of the temporal bone you have to visit your radiology center frequently and you have to see actually how the scans are being taken you have to sit next to the radiologist and learn how to handle the radiology software you can download osirex or horos software for mac which are free or radiant icon viewer for the windows you have to start asking cd of each scan to the radiologist and before even seeing the films or the radiologist report go through the cd and try to write down the abnormal or pathological findings in particular ct scan then discuss with your radiologist if you are not understanding you have to sit with the radiologist and then see that particular scan with the radiologist as all of us know practice makes everyone perfect so this is how i learned the hrct temporal bone i used to carry information from professor vijendra i used to give it to my radiologist sir ramchandra sir then he used to give me feedback about radiology i used to go to tell sir again sir will ask some question i used to go to meet him again i'll come back and tell so like this every scan two three times i used to go to radiology center come back with the information and then like this then i started learning about the structures so see this is whole human body from top to bottom so many structures are there in his whole body and the radiologist will keep seeing from the top of head till the toe and for ear it is very small part from there so you cannot expect radiologist to till each and every point to you unless you are yourself is having knowledge about that particular area like we have knowledge of ear so they are seeing through the radiological aspect but if you compare to the whole body you can make out that ear is a very small part for them so you cannot expect to tell radiologist everything to you unless yourself is knowing everything about the radiology of the temporal bone so aim of this lecture is to inspire the participants to learn about the hrct of temporal bone and everyone should be the master of hrct temporal bone and you have to learn to pick up important points which help us to improve the our surgeries so important point and rule are no one can teach you the radiology of the temporal bone only the way how to read can be taught so that is what i am going to tell you today unless you yourself use the laptop and see the scan in cds from top to bottom nothing can be learned see you see scan today you will feel very happy i told you in a very simple way after one week you are going to forget everything unless you use that technique to read the scan so hrct temporal bone is a photographic memory it's in your hand whether you have to make it as short term memory by seeing it once and forgetting or you want to make it long term memory by repeatedly seeing the scan so you have to imagine a 3d anatomy of the temporal bone while looking at the scans and i'll advise you to use the dry temporal bones or 3d models in the initial days of learning temporal bone anatomy itself being a complex it is more difficult to understand radiology of the hip see anatomy itself is a very complex of temporal bone then you can imagine the radiology is the more difficult part and what makes is more complex is the plane of surgery see always we we operate from the sagittal plane we go from the lateral to medial and what scans we are seeing we are seeing the axial scan the reverse is true in the ctpns because we operate from the front to back and even the scans also we are seeing the coronal cuts so our operating plane and the scan plane is matching that is the problem with the hrct temporal bone why it, it is very difficult first is the anatomy of temporal bone is difficult second is radiology of the temporal bone is difficult and third thing is that you are operating from lateral to medial and you are seeing scan from the axial cut like top to bottom like that that makes it more complex three times more difficult than ctpns so the thickness which is required to read good hrct temporal bone is at least 0.6 to 5 mm the axial cuts coronal cuts sagittal cuts will be there you can do some reconstructions and you can use some special techniques 
so our protocol is we discuss with the radiologist so we have to tell radiologist the clinical information we will nowadays whatsapp is become very common so we can share the endoscopic pictures also and we can inform them what you are exactly looking for and what we are expecting in particular scan that will prevent your under reporting or over reporting of the scan suppose you have diagnosed endoscopically you know that it is a gluvior that is otitis media of with effusion you send for scan entire mastoid cavity will be filled up with the soft tissue then the radiologist will get confused what is this disease this can be the granulation this can be the fluid that can be the cholesterol granuloma even it can be cholesteatoma also but clinically you are giving them information that it is a simple gluvior that is the collection of fluid so that prevents your under reporting or over reporting so this is very very important to tell your radiologist what you are exactly expecting so what imaging modality to use this also you should understand whether the imaging modality is really necessary or not whether to do ct scan in all cases that is the non contrast temporal bone ct when to use contrast this you should understand when to use mri this also you should know you should know when to use mri with contrast you should know when to use special sequences or reconstructions techniques or mr sequences and you should also know when to use three tesla mri so we'll see one by one whether the imaging is really necessary so suppose if patient comes in acute onset acute onset cases generally we treat conservatively we'll give some oral antibiotics anti inflammatory and we'll wait and watch for 5 10 days so those cases we avoid the scanning except if you are expecting the impending or the patient has itself presented with the complications like you get in facial nerve palsy in the cases of acute otitis media then you have to do scan and you have to see whether horizontal segment is decent or not so depending on that you should know whether imaging is really required or not or you can postpone it then you should know exactly when to do scan you have to judge the weightage between imaging and patient generalized condition suppose patient has come to you walking in your opd severe vertigo is there first you will try to settle down its vertigo and then you will go for imaging if you require suppose if it is himself is getting settled down in 5 days with your uh, treatment uh, the medical line of treatment then in those cases we don't get the ct scan done it's not like that patient came with severe vertigo you want to see the cp angle lesion immediately you shifted to ct scan center by that time patient is going to suffer a lot so you should know when to do scan exactly if you have doubt in some cases so doubtful cases means you are not sure what is the lesion inside suppose you got big oral polyp in the external auditory canal which is just bleeding on touch you are not able to make out what it can be so in this doubtful cases before meddling with that mass it is always better to get the ct scan done then recent onset effusion i already told you if you do the scan entire mastoid will be filled with the soft tissue you will get confused and even you will get uh, means you will confuse your radiologist also granulation tissue also will give same picture and active inspections the active infections like acute otitis media unless it is complicating or there is some granulation in the external auditory canal or it is otitis media uh, otitis externa or pharyngeolosis those cases we don't do the scan the acute infection where we get the scan done is osteomyelitis calvis so this is one exception for that as soon as you see the osteomyelitis calvus we get the scan done next is non contrast ct nowadays almost all cases we do non contrast ct temporal bone and you get sometimes complimentary most of the time i ask ramchandra sir whenever we are ordering some mri to just for our more information even if you are looking at the cp angle for any cp angle lesions we order most of the time mri mri cp angle so along with that i always ask sir to give complimentary hrct also in cd only they need not print it so with that you can get lot of normal scan to study next is when to do contrast hrct whenever you are suspecting the vascular lesion or there is a complication of csom we are expecting like meningitis lateral sinus thrombosis or autogenic abscess and of course i already told osteomyelitis calvus if you give contrast the planes will be more clear when to do mri so the simple thing is 
the structure which you cannot identify on ct scan you have to get mri for that like facial nerve lesions or facial nerve canal you have to see like in the facial nerve schwannomas or tumors or post traumatic facial nerve palsy so facial nerve schwannoma and tumor is a soft tissue lesion so you cannot make out much of information in hrct but post traumatic facial nerve palsy you have to see whether any bony spicules are compressing the facial nerve or any fracture in the facial nerve canal so in that case you have to get hrct temporal bone so you should know in which lesion of which structure you have to get hrct or mri next is if you are looking for inner ear hearing rehabilitation like cochlear implant workup you have to get mri done you are specifically looking for the status of the membranous labyrinth then mri will help you want to see the C, uh, cp angle that is cerebrospondyline angle mri will help and lesions which can be diagnosed only on mri see in hrct everything will be looking same you cannot differentiate between cholesteatoma cholesterol granuloma fluid or granulation tissue mri will help you to diagnose these diseases as we know cholesterol granuloma is t1 hyperin dense so that itself is a diagnostic of cholesterol granuloma and cholesteatoma as we know nowadays non eco planar dwi imaging we are using to find out even smaller amount of cholesteatoma like 2 mm or 3 mm also we can pick it up so we should know all these things and then facial reconstructions of the hrct sequences we do it generally for the ossicles facial nerve and cochlea and mri non eco planar dwi i already told you that we use for cholesteatoma this sequence we use to see the nerves more clearly and fire suppression we have to use because fat may confuse us whether it is a enhancing lesion or not so is a 3 tesla mri necessary because most of the centers they will be having 1.5 tesla mri when you are specifically looking for miniers disease you want to diagnose it with mri that is endolymphatic hypertrophy you want to see where we have to inject intratympanic gadolinium and wait for 4 hours and then do the mri so in that case we want more clarity in more details so in that that is the one case only where you have to get it three tesla mri only with 1.5 tesla mri it's very difficult to find out so how to read the ct scan first you have to expertise the normal scan and then only you can identify the diseases so these are few basics axial cut it is taken 30 degrees to the anthropological plane one minute i will hide in this panel just for it is coming in way yeah so the axial cut these are taken 30 degrees to the anthropological plane anthropological plane nothing but it passes from the upper border of the tragus that is the superior external auditory canal wall and below the eye that is infraorbital line so this is the anthropological plane and scan will be 30 degrees to it and it will pass exactly from the lateral semicircular canal why to take scan in this particular plane only because you will get all the structure in their morphological forms when you see hrct temporal bone taken in this plane if you change the plane there will be the distortion of morphology even normal morphologically it will get distorted and coronal cuts are perpendicular to it like this it will be perpendicular to this so normal scan whenever you see whatever is your left hand is the right temporal bone of the patient and vice versa as cuts we are seeing always from the foot end of the patient that's why i told you in the beginning you have to go at the radiology center and you have to see how the scan is being taken so this is the how the scan is being taken you are sitting at the foot end of the patient that's why what happens whatever is the your left hand is actually the right side of the patient and whatever is your right hand will be the left side of the patient that's why it is very important to understand this that we are seeing all the scans from the foot end of the patient that's why there is a reversal of the side still what you need to do in a particular scan whenever you see you have to see for these symbols r and l so this is the right side and this is the left side 
so as i told you you can see this is our right hand but it is the left temporal bone of the patient there will be some symbols in this particular scan if you see the this bottom you are seeing wl then ww so ww means it is the window width window width in simple language is the brightness of the scan and wl wl means the window level so window level is nothing but simple language it is a contrast so that your windows will keep changing so how to use the radiological software you have to download it you have to install it you can use trial version or paid version and you have to learn about the functioning of the radiological software who will taught you your radiologist colleague will taught you you have to go and sit with them so i'll just show you i use uh, this radiant icom viewer paid version because i'm win using windows laptop if you are having apple well and good you can use horos which is also more clearer so there are several functions will be there here is a split screen you can keep two screens side by side and then this is the window setting adjust the image you can change it ct abdomen ct angio ct bone whatever you want ct brain ct chest ct lungs whatever window you can want you can keep it i always keep it as preset ideal that is window level 500 and window width 4500 because this is little more smoothing to eyes you can say scan looks good in this window so scan looks good in this window so always use that that i have made free setting in my system then this with this you can just move your scan here and there sharing is coming in the way okay so then here will be the measurements you can actually measure the distance whatever you want if you want to see how much is the distance between antrum and the outer mastoid cortex you can just measure it will come to know that 1.5 cm show you good, should not go beyond it so this all things you have to open yourself then only you will come to know how it functions how many times i'll tell you tomorrow you are going to forget it unless you do practice on yourself so next is the these are some house filled units which uh, are not given in any books actually this i only after seeing some scans i have calculated some rough values where the metals will be having maximum that is more than 14000 to 30000 suppose if you are getting any foreign body in the ear not foreign body any prosthesis you are not able to make out whether it is a teflon or uh, metal you can just check the house filled unit of that and then you will get rough idea whether it can be metal or just teflon because teflon will not be having so much house filled units then like csf will be having around plus 15 clotted blood is 50 to 75 unclotted will be 13 to 50 cancellous bone will be around 300 to 400 and cortical bone will be 500 to 1900 then cholesterol granuloma will be around 50 and tympanosclerosis will be more than 200 so this is roughly actually because for the cholesterol granuloma anyway we get mri done where it will be t1 hyper intense but if you want to differentiate it with from any watery fluid or csf then roughly you can tell whether it can be cholesterol granuloma or it can be other fluid only on plain hrct temporal bone so this finishes my first chapter we'll go now to the main chapter that is the chapter 2 the journey through the normal temporal bone so our protocol is to look for each and every structure of this whatever is mentioned here that is the nasopharynx infratemporal fossa and its muscles styloid process stylomastoid foramen mastoid tip mastoid air cell system sinus plate sigmoid sinus jugular bulge jugular foramen dural plate internal carotid canal posterior bony metal wall scutum or outer retic wall anterior canal wall temporomandibular joint then middle ear with hypomeso and epitympanum 
ossicles, malleus, incus, and step is suprastructure, tensor canal, eustachian tube orifice, medial and lateral end, inner ear structures like cochlea, semicircular canal, and vestibule, internal auditory mantis, petrous suplex, facial nerve, and others like vestibular and cochlear aqueduct. So if you see, I have written down everything from bottom to top, whatever we can see. So if you understand the anatomy, you will understand the radiology. If you are not knowing the anatomy of the temporal bone, it is next to impossible to understand radiology of the temporal bone. So radiology can be imagined and understood only when one knows the detailed anatomy of the temporal bone. So if you don't know detailed anatomy of the temporal bone, I will advise you first learn the anatomy of the temporal bone and then go for the radiology. So it will be easy for you. So normal scans, lower to upper cuts. We always, most of the time we read from lower to upper cut. Why? Because most of the structures are easy to see, including the facial nerve. If you are tracing the scan from lower to upper cuts, it's easy. And most of the radiological center, they print the films in this format. Then upper to lower cuts, you can see internal auditory matters easily, semicircular canals easily. And facial nerve is even more easier than reading it from lower to upper cut. So, lower to upper cut. And now I will show you the scans, whatever. I will be showing you from lower to upper cuts always. Whenever I will be showing the reverse from upper to lower cuts, I will tell you. But by default, whenever I will be showing, I will be showing from lower cuts to the upper cut. So HRCT temporal bone, it's a misnomer actually, or you can tell it is incomplete nomenclature because it only doesn't show you temporal bone. It shows so many non-temporal parts like, uh, I'll come to that, which parts you can see, the most ignored parts in the non-temporal bone parts, less likely to be encountered parts during the routine ear surgery but are important in unusual extensions of the diseases and lateral skull base cases. Okay, so what are the non-temporal parts which you are seeing in HRCT temporal bone daily, but those all are the non-temporal parts. So the nasopharynx, eustachian tube orifice, the medial end, lateral end, of course it is covered in the HRCT temporal bone, but medial end also you can see. Sinuses you can see, infratemporal fossa, foramen magnum also you see. You are seeing atlas axis, vertebras also, and foramen of skull, all the skull based foramena you can see. So these are all actually non-temporal parts, still you are seeing in a particular HRCT temporal bone. So what CT scan shows? Does it show only bone? No, because it is best for bone, but it shows everything. And best example is CT brain. All of us know brain is a soft tissue. Still we get CT brain in so many cases. Head injury means CT brain. Why? Brain is soft tissue. Now we have to get MRI done. But still we are doing CT brain. Why? Because CT scan show even soft tissue also. So you have to remember this. CT scan is best for bone but it shows everything. So to make my point clear. I will start my lecture from the soft tissues itself, not from the bones. You can see all these structures are soft tissue. Eustachian tube orifice, the medial end which is in the nasopharynx, torus tuberis, fossa of Rosenmuller. These are not bones. These are all soft tissue structures. Still in the beginning of my lecture, I am going to show you in the HRCD temporal bone. So all of us know, I, as I told, if you know the anatomy, you will know the radiology. So I will start with this. Nasal endoscopy, all of us know how the first pass is done. This is the inferior turbinate, this is the septum. We go all along the floor of the nasal cavity and finally we reach the nasopharynx. Where, where you can see, what are the structures you see in the nasopharynx? You see this is nasopharynx proper. You see the torus tuberis, you see the eustachian tube orifice and somewhere deep inside will be the of Rosenmuller. So once you know this anatomy that you are to go along the inferior turbinate and septum and go and trace till end 
you will automatically reach to the nasopharynx where you are interested seeing the eustachian tube orifice now why to see eustachian orifice end this end particularly in the cases of hrct temporal bone so i'll come to that so i'll be using some online content in this lecture so it is purely used for educational and teaching purpose and not for any commercial benefits in any way that is the disclaimer i want to do in the beginning so we'll start seeing the scan so i told you we'll go to the scan i'll open this scan i'll set my window and here we are already so you know this is the septum this is the nasal septum this is the inferior turbinate what we saw in the anatomy if you come along the floor of the nasal cavity you come till the end of the inferior turbinate posterior laterally you will see the eustachian tube orifice so this is nothing but the eustachian tube orifice so i'll just enlarge it and i'll bring it in center so this is inferior turbinate you come posterior laterally you get the eustachian tube orifice in hrct temporal bone always remember none of the structure is 2d all structures are 3d means there will be the structures which are present in the multiple cuts not in single cut so like you know this one will concentrate on inferior turbinate see i am in the lower most part of this temporal bone ct you can see here if i go up if i go up i am going again superiorly so if i go down so this is the lower most part of this particular hrct temporal bone you are seeing the inferior turbinate here i am coming up now still you are seeing the inferior turbinate i'll come up come up come up see so many sections inferior turbinate is still there okay and then you get the middle turbinate so the point here i want to tell that it is not a single cut where you are seeing the structures all the structures will be present in multiple cuts like this now you see posterior lateral to the inferior turbinate end you are getting the eustachian tube orifice this is eustachian tube orifice this is torus tuberis so you keep seeing i'll go down now i'm going down and then i'm coming up so multiple cuts you get this structures it's not a 2d structure all are 3d structures then here it matches our endoscopy picture and what we saw the posterior end of the inferior turbinate then the eustachian tube orifice torus tuberis and i told you this gray area what you are seeing more clear in the opposite side this is nothing but the fossa of rosenmuller so see this is hrct temporal bone but what we are looking in the beginning of the scan is the soft tissue that's why i told hrct temporal bone shows everything but it is best for bone so next we'll go to the infra temporal fossa now you go back to our protocol i'll just take you to that page the beginning see we are moving like this protocol only first we saw the nasopharynx then we are going to infra temporal fossa like this step wise you have to read all the scan not haphazardly so infra temporal fossa we know there are muscles in the infra temporal fossa and there are fat planes in the infra temporal fossa so what you need to do we are already reaching the infra temporal fossa then we know the muscles of the infra temporal fossa why we see infra temporal fossa in hrct temporal bone mainly we see for the osteomyelitis calvus which through the tympanic slit can spread into the infra temporal fossa and affect these areas secondly if there is some unusual extension of tumor in this area you can see that so if you know the anatomy if you know the anatomy it's easy to identify so this is the infra temporal fossa this is infra temporal fossa proper you know this is the lateral pterygoid plate this is the medial pterygoid plate and if you know by anatomy the attachments of the medial and lateral pterygoids we know medial pterygoid will be attached to the medial part of lateral pterygoid plate and lateral pterygoid will be attached to the lateral part of lateral pterygoid plate so both will be attached to the lateral pterygoid plate only medial pterygoid will be medially lateral pterygoid will be laterally and this part 
receives the insertion of the temporalis muscle and outside will be masseter along the ramus of the mandible so this much anatomy if you know same thing we have to go and see in that particular scan so see here now this is the lateral pterygoid plate this is the medial pterygoid plate so the muscle which is attached to medial part of lateral pterygoid plate it is the medial pterygoid and muscle which is attached lateral to medial pterygoid plate it is the lateral pterygoid i'll make it bone window so that these muscles are more uh, prominently seen now so you can see here there are two muscles which are attached on either side of the lateral pterygoid plate so this is the medial pterygoid this is the lateral pterygoid and i told you this is the triangular muscle you are seeing it is nothing but the temporalis muscle and laterally will be the masseter along the ramus of the mandible and if you see posteriorly you can see the parotid also so all these are soft tissue but we are still seeing in the hrct temporal bone and you have to look specifically for this fat plane here this fat plane this gray area you are seeing so this gray area are very important when you see the cases of osteomyelitis calvus i will show you tomorrow how to identify extension into infratemporal fossa tomorrow i am going to cover the pathologies in that i will cover plus next is you can use the soft tissue window also to see the infratemporal fossa even more clearly so i'll open the soft tissue window scan so this is the soft tissue window here you can make out muscles are even more prominent because this is soft tissue window so you can see here clearly the lateral pterygoid plate the medial pterygoid plate so muscle attached medially is the medial pterygoid muscle attached laterally is the lateral pterygoid this is the temporalis muscle and this is the masseter muscle and you can see the fat how it looks i told you these are fat planes so these fat planes are normal on the both the side means there is no any extension of this is in infra temporal fossa in this particular case because this is the normal scan and you can see even parotid also because parotid is also fat lobules will be there so it will look like same like grayish area next is foramen of skull so all of us know this foramen we will see foramen rotundum foramen oval foramen lacerum foramen spinosum so for hrct temporal bone we are mainly concerned about the foramen spinosum because in persistent sepital artery it will be obliterated or it will be smaller in caliber then foramen oval and foramen lacerum also because we know the horizontal petrous carotid ultimately goes to this area to take a another turn so if you know this anatomy you have to just find out the structures like this which is oval in shape which is round in shape and which is irregular in shape in a given particular scan and then foramen rotundum is also there so i'll open the scan so this is the scan so what i'm going to do i'm going to come further up so i'm coming further up what we are looking we are looking in this area two structure where one is big oval and another is small round so just come up see here you are seeing big oval area you are seeing big oval area here this is nothing but the foramen oval and you are seeing posteriorly one small opening that is nothing but the foramen spinosum here it is looking very small but as i told you all structures are 3d structures not 2d structure don't just look at this cut and say that it is obliterated foramen spinosum so sepidal artery will be persistent like that if you i go down you can see that its diameter is increasing so means it is the normal foramen spinosum then this is at this level you will get the median canal also uh, i'll request participant not to touch their mobile screen too much because here uh, annotation uh, annotation request is coming and after that my cursor is getting blocked i am not able to move it so this is the median canal or pterygoid canal so we know exactly parallel to it will be foramen rotundum so if you come up you come up you get another parallel structure here 
so this is nothing but the foramen rotundum if you see the ctp and s it will be more clear so you make it coronal and you see it the foramen so i told you one ctp and s is also most of the time they will cover in hrcd temporal bone so here you can see so this is nothing but the ctp and s suppose you are not well versed from a anterior side where is the foramen rotundum and median canal what you can do we already saw there the axial cut the median canal so this is the median canal what you can do you can make it 3d mpr that is multiplanar reconstruction open it select only axial find out where is the median canal okay i got here already foramen rotundum so i'll keep it over there and then make it coronal so here our regular picture what we get always foramen rotundum and median canal okay so foramen rotundum median canal like this skull base structures also you can easily identify so this is regarding the foramen of skull base next is styloid process what is the importance of the styloid process styloid process is the main landmark if you want to find out facial nerve from stylomastoid foramen i'll show you how so i'm going to use 3d model here so this is the 3d model it's available free of cost you can search it so this is the styloid process this is the master tip simple thing you have to do you have to trace styloid process till its base so if you see from down you get only one soft tissue structure here at the base of styloid process rest everything is bone tympanic bone styloid process mastoid process all are bone only soft tissue structure at this particular point is the stylomastoid foramen from where facial nerve exits the temporal bone so this much anatomy if you know what you have to do in your ct scan so i'll select now one side only here already you are seeing the styloid process partly i'll keep tracing the styloid process towards its base so that is the importance of using cd or radiological software you can just fix up your arrow here just simply keep tracing it and you can see even mastoid process is also mastoid tip is also coming in the picture so you know here this part if you keep and merging these two bones that is the styloid process and the mastoid tip there will not be any other soft tissue apart from the stylomastoid foramen because it entire area is bony only at the level of stylomastoid foramen so i am coming up you can see the styloid process i am coming up and as i told you everything is bone in this area except the stylomastoid foramen so i'll make it zoom so i told you everything is bone except for the stylomastoid foramen in this area but there may be some confusion see this other soft tissue is there so this can be also stylomastoid foramen or this also soft tissue is there so this also can be stylomastoid foramen why i am calling only this structure as stylomastoid foramen because if you look carefully it is exactly at the junction of this see and it is forming round if you have doubt see if somebody tells this is stylomastoid foramen what you need to do you keep your arrow there come up that soft tissue has already vanished there then suppose this this part is stylomastoid foramen you trace it up it will vanish but this soft tissue that is the stylomastoid foramen it will never vanish because it is going to continue as a vertical segment of the facial nerve so i am coming up this is vertical segment of the facial nerve anyway facial nerve i'll come once again the point here i wanted to tell is the importance of the styloid process just seeing the styloid process you can trace your entire facial nerve 
because you will get silo master foramen very easily there so that is the importance of styloid process then we'll see the sigmoid sinus jugular bulb jugular foramen internal carotid and when to say it anteriorly play slow like tegment this i'll cover tomorrow and also high jugular bulb i'll cover tomorrow today we'll see only anatomy so again i'll use same model so here you can see all of us know the sigmoid sinus or the lateral sinus is nothing but the continuation of the transverse sinus transverse sinus will come from the posterior part it will take a turn in the temporal bone and it will become sigmoid sinus and down it will go and it will form jugular bulb and then it will continue as the internal jugular vein in the neck and immediately anterior to internal jugular vein will be the internal carotid artery which will also ultimately enter the temporal bone the petrous part and you will get bone between the jugular bulb and internal carotid artery which is called as crotch or jugulo carotico septum so all these things we know by anatomy so i'll turn this again so something like this you will see in hrct temporal bone that is transverse sinus continuing as the sigmoid sinus then the jugular bulb jugular bulb and then the internal jugular vein along with internal carotid artery anteriorly same thing we have to trace in scan so i'll so this is the structure where i have to use from top to bottom because we are going to search first the transverse sinus so transverse sinus will come from posteriorly it will come inside temporal bone and it will form the sigmoid sinus so this is nothing but the sigmoid sinus once you get the sigmoid sinus you just keep tracing it down because we see in we saw in anatomy it will lead us to jugular bulb so i am just tracing this sigmoid sinus i am just looking where it is going don't bother about all other structure just forget it just be arjuna if you are seeing one structure keep seeing one structure forget about what is this otic capsule petrous apex everything doesn't matter currently because we are concentrating on this sigmoid sinus only our full concentration should be on sigmoid sinus only so i am just keeping eye on this sigmoid sinus what is happening so i am going down going down going down i am not bothered about all this structure what is coming in picture i am just going down my aim is i want to see where sigmoid sinus is making jugular bulb so here it is see you can see the jugular bulb sigmoid sinus and as i told you none of the structure is 2d this is also sigmoid sinus and even in the top most cut we saw this is also sigmoid sinus so you cannot say that this is the sigmoid sinus then how sigmoid sinus can come here it's not like that we saw na even in this you can completely make out this whole thing is sigmoid sinus it's not 2d structure it is 3d structure so multiple levels it will be seen so that is same thing you need to understand in hrct temporal bone that none of the structure is 2d all the structures are 3d so this is sigmoid sinus and then it is forming jugular bulb next is what we'll go down 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 and then we'll go inside the neck where it will form the internal jugular vein then we saw that anterior to the jugular bulb there was internal carotid artery that is petrous part of internal carotid artery and the bone between two was the jugulo carotico septum so once these two are separate this is the jugular bulb and this is the internal carotid you keep going down there will not be any separation so this is the area of jugular foramen so this is nothing but jugular foramen where anteriorly will be the internal carotid artery posteriorly will be the jugular bulb and if you go down these structures are only going to form the internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery will remain as it is now here in hrct temporal bone on plain scan we cannot tell which is the internal jugular vein and which is the internal carotid artery proper you can just see the canals this is the internal artery this is the internal carotid canal this is called a vertical petrous carotid canal this is the jugular bulb the bone between two is 
sugulocaroticoseptum and if you see very very carefully you will be seeing that this particular part this particular part it is divided in two parts by another bone here you can see here the extension of the same bone you can see there is a one small part is there and one big part is there so this antero medial part is nothing but it is called pars nervosa because lower cranial nerves will come here and this big part posterior lateral part is the pars venosa where actually jugular bulb will get converted into the internal jugular vein so so many structures are seen in this particular picture now let me tell you again jugular bulb which is also the pars venosa pars nervosa the internal carotid artery vertical petrous and the part of sigmoid sinus and if you go further the here from here will come our inferior petrosal sinus also okay so like this you have to trace each and every structure like how we trace from the transverse sinus sigmoid sinus then sigmoid sinus we trace till it became jugular bulb and as soon as we got jugular bulb we catch hold of internal carotid artery and as we are now knowing that this is the internal carotid artery vertical petrous carotid artery you can trace it up see it's coming in the middle ear in the floor of the eustachian tube this is nothing but the eustachian tube where it is taking a horizontal turn this is nothing but the horizontal petrous carotid so once you get one structure trace that structure throughout the scan that is the point which i want to tell okay so this is the horizontal petrous carotid and as i told you this is the area of the foramen lacerum and you can see here the foramen oval foramen spinosum and anteriorly will be the median canal all the structures again getting combined together everything each and everything is related to each other and i told you at this level lower cranial nerves will come then the inferior petrous sinus will come and if you still further go down you'll get the hypoglossal canal also so this is the lower most level of the jugular foramen where hypoglossal canal is seen so to see the vessels you should give contrast so we'll see how it will look in contrast scan so this i already shown you the transfer sinus comes like this it becomes the sigmoid sinus then it forms the jugular bulb we saw inferior petrosal sinus you can see if contrast is given you can even trace the superior petrosal sinus all these sinuses ultimately where they are going in the cavernous sinus so all these structures you can see if the contrast scan is done so we'll open now contrast scan now in this contrast scan our aim is to see the sigmoid sinus transfer sinus internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery it uh, so i'll go again in the top i want to find out the transfer sinus which i got already so you can see the transfer sinus then i am still coming down i want to see the sigmoid sinus so i am moving my cursor along with the sigmoid sinus so this is nothing but the sigmoid sinus coming into the picture then i want to see where is the jugular bulb so i am keeping my cursor along the sinus i am going down and here you can see the sigmoid sinus jugular bulb and you know anteriorly was the internal carotid artery and still if you go down now this is in the neck proper where you can see the internal carotid artery and the internal jugular vein separately so why we are able to see these vessels clearly because we are given contrast scan this is the contrast scan next we will see the floor of the external auditory canal 
so as you know here already master tip has come and you find the posterior canal wall and anterior canal wall why to find out the posterior and anterior canal wall see if you get the anterior and posterior canal wall you go down you will reach the floor and the tympanic bone you go up you will reach the outer retic wall so first go and find the posterior canal wall posterior canal wall is nothing but the anterior limit of mastoid air cell system so this is the posterior canal wall and this is the anterior canal wall now i'll go down in the scan i'm going down because i want to see the floor of the external auditory canal so this is nothing but the floor of the external auditory canal which is nothing but formed by the tympanic bone so this is floor you come up anterior and posterior canal wall will get separated you still go up again both will meet to form the outer retic wall or roof of the external auditory canal okay and here we all know that anterior to the anterior canal wall will be temporomandibular joint so this is nothing but the temporomandibular joint or if you come more up you can call it as glenoid fossa glenoid fossa or temporomandibular joint here you can see the condyle of the mandible next we will see the tympanic membrane so tympanic membrane is a very thin structure so it's very difficult to see the normal tympanic membrane in hrct temporal bone to see the tympanic membrane there should be air both the sides of the tympanic membrane that is in the external auditory canal as well as in the middle ear so here if you see there is already thin gray line has come i'll make it more prominent so that you will be able to appreciate little better i am not sure how much it is clear on your mobile so here you can see thin grayish line is there so this is nothing but the tympanic membrane why we are able to appreciate tympanic membrane because there is air both medial and lateral to it if air is not there some soft tissue is there you will not able to identify the normal tympanic membrane next is the ossicular chain so we know this structure tympanic membrane then malleus handle then lateral process of malleus neck of malleus head of malleus then body of incus short process of incus long process of incus incoido stapedial joint then the stapes crura foot plate see whenever i am showing you some structure i am first showing you anatomy so that you will understand it better so what is the thing with the ossicular chain see you are seeing cuts from the foot end of the patient so your cuts are going something like this from down to top so first what you'll get in the scan you will get tip of the handle of malleus then when you go up you will get the handle of malleus then you still further go up you get the neck of the malleus still further up you will go you will get head of the malleus once you get head of the malleus you can get the body of incus with the short process of incus then you start coming down from top to bottom to trace the long process of incus so if you come down this is the long process of incus you will reach to one point where you will get the incoido stapedial joint once you get incoido stapedial joint again to see stapes you have to go again up so up down up two times you have to do like this i'll show you in 3d model also so again here your cuts are going from top to uh, this bottom to top so first you will get the tip of handle of malleus then you will get handle of malleus neck of malleus head of malleus then again you will start coming down with the body of incus short process of incus long process of incus again you have to go up to see the stapes so first from top to bottom bottom to top again bottom to top like this two times you have to do so we'll open that scan where we we were near the tympanic membrane so this was our tympanic membrane then we'll come up so here you are seeing one dot is coming into the picture so i'll make it more zoom this is the tip of handle of malleus you come up it will become handle of malleus handle is like something like stick it is like stick so you are seeing the like stick like structure then you will go up it has become round so this round doesn't mean that it is the head of malleus because to call it as head of malleus 
there should be incus along with so this is not head of malleus this is the neck of the malleus though it is round it is not head of malleus this is neck of malleus you keep pressing neck of malleus up you will get one round structure along with the incus so this is the head of the malleus body of incus and short process of incus what is this this is called ice cream cone appearance where ice cream is head of malleus and cone is the body of incus along with the short process of incus i'll make it more zoom we'll concentrate on ice cream cone in the epitympanum this is nothing but the epitympanum so you got the head of malleus you found the incus once you got the incus you trace it down again now along the long process of incus so this is long process of incus long process of incus and you can see there is two dots appearing so this is i call it as two dot sign that is nothing but the formed by the lenticular process of the incus and head of the malleus so this is two dot sign and when there is a continuity in this two dots like this here you can see both dots have merge means ossicular chain is intact so i'll come up again we got the body of incus we are tracing the long process of incus we have reached to the incudo stapedial joint and as i told you to see the stapes crura you have to go high up again so to go again up so we are at the incudo stapedial joint i'll go up again because i want to see the crura here you can see the posterior crust the anterior crust so these are crura so stapes is the most difficult structure to see in hrct temporal bone if it is surrounded by soft tissue then you have to be careful always our radiologist has habit if he is not able to make out stapes he will not write uh, stapes as absent he will write always stapes is not appreciable means it is not appreciable on the ct scan but it may be present it is not like that stapes is absent so stapes is very difficult structure to find out in the scan but of course with the 3d reconstruction techniques i'll show you now only if uh, this particular scan is having so with 3d recon it's easy to get the whole stapes so you can see here this is the right stapes you can see the posterior crust you can see the anterior crust this is the head of the stapes this is part of the lenticular process of incus and this is the handle of malleus or you can say neck of the malleus so with 3d recon you can see stapes more clearly than in a particular axial cut so we'll come back to stapes so here you can see the anterior crust and posterior crust so we saw malleus incus and stapes and if you see the from the middle fossa approach it will be seen like something like this this is the ice cream cone this is the head of malleus body of incus short process of incus so malleus incus and stapes we saw will go to facial nerve so facial nerve from lower to upper cuts that is from the stylomastoid foramen up to the internal auditory meatus so we saw already that how to identify the stylomastoid foramen i'll open one more 3d model here this is the 3d model again pick up 
so this is from the siloam acid foramen just above the level of siloam acid foramen you will get the corda tympani nerve then this is the vertical segment of the facial nerve vertical segment of the facial nerve then the horizontal segment this is the second genu geniculate ganglion the dilated structure gs pin will go anteriorly then it will take turn near the basal turn of the cochlea this is basal turn of cochlea labyrinthine segment and then it will enter the internal auditory matter so same thing you have to find out in the scan so to find out styloid mastoid foramen what we have to do we have to go and find the styloid process as i told in the beginning this is the styloid process just trace it up you got the styloid mastoid foramen and then just keep it tracing up this is the vertical segment of the facial nerve vertical segment of the facial nerve till it is the vertical segment we all know second genu comes posterior lateral to the pyramid so this is the pyramid you can see the projection in this middle ear sinus this is nothing but the pyramid so this is the stapedius muscle and laterally will be the facial nerve then this w sign it is formed by the sinus tympani medially pyramid will be at the center and laterally will be the facial recess so this is the facial recess the pyramid and sinus tympani it forms sign of w so our facial nerve is here just keep it tracing up here you can see even more clearly the pyramid the triangular structure and where it is going it is heading towards the head of the stapes so this triangular structure with stapedius muscle inside and posterior lateral to it is the facial nerve second genu so this is the second genu go up you can see facial nerve is taking a turn it has taken a turn and it has become the horizontal segment of the facial nerve it comes still higher up you can see there is a dilation in the facial nerve so this dilation is nothing but the geniculate ganglion it comes still higher up you will see the facial nerve is taking a turn the sharp acute v turn to form the labyrinthine segment near the basal turn of cochlea so labyrinthine segment and ultimately it will enter the internal auditory matter so we'll go back again styloid process mastoid tip you have to trace the styloid process at its base this is the stylomastoid foramen come up this is the vertical segment till you see pyramid it will be the vertical segment as soon as you see the pyramid it will be the second genu so this is the second genu of the facial nerve till come up it will form the horizontal segment you come little up you will see dilation in the facial nerve that is geniculate ganglion then this is taking turn this is thing but the first genu later it will enter in the internal auditory matrix as labyrinthine segment and this is the internal auditory matrix so this we trace from bottom to top then you go from top to bottom you have to find out the internal auditory matrix you will see like this the internal auditory matrix the labyrinthine segment first genu anteriorly will go the gspn then geniculate ganglion then horizontal segment then the second genu and vertical segment so we will trace the facial nerve from top to bottom now so internal auditory matrix is the communication between the posterior fossa and the otic capsule if this much you know what you need to do this is the posterior fossa dura there are only two connections between the posterior fossa dura and the otic capsule that is inner ear one is internal auditory matrix second is the cochlear aqueduct so internal auditory matrix diameter is very big cochlear duct will be very small so only these two structures will pass from the posterior fossa dura towards the otic capsule or inner ear so you have to find out the structure which is passing through these two structures so i am going down 
see here there is one structure which is passing from posterior fossa towards the otic capsule so this is nothing but the interauditory matter second structure i told you if you still go down with the same alignment you will get the cochlear aqueduct so this is the second extension of the posterior fossa dura towards the otic capsule there is a third extension i will not call it from the posterior fossa dura towards the otic capsule actually it is the connection from the otic capsule to the posterior fossa dura that is the vestibular aqueduct i will come to that later now we will concentrate on the interauditory matters so from posterior fossa you have to find out extension towards the otic capsule this is nothing but your interauditory matters once you get interauditory matters this is the labyrinthine segment you go down facial nerve is taking acute turn then there is a bulge in facial nerve this is the geniculate ganglia then keep tracing facial nerve distally distally you reach to the pyramid so this is pyramid this is the second gen of the facial nerve and then you keep going down all along the vertical segment of the facial nerve till you reach to the stylomastoid foramen so like this you can trace the facial nerve from top to bottom and bottom to top next is inner ear structures so what are the inner ear structures you have to search you will search the interauditory matter semicircular canal vestibule cochlea vestibular aqueduct cochlear aqueduct oval window round window all these structures you need to identify in particular ct scan so this is the model which represents how the structure comes into the picture when you trace it from top to bottom because i told you inner ear structures are more easy to identify when you see from top to bottom so like this you will get in the scan you will get the interauditory matters you will get here cochlea basal turn then this region will get the labyrinthine segment before that you will get the superior semicircular canal because superior semicircular canal is the topmost part of the temporal bone or inner ear so superior semicircular canal will have two ends ampullary and non ampullary end so this is the superior semicircular canal it will have anterior ampullary end posterior non ampullary end ampullary end means it has to dilate ampulla means dilation so ampullary end if you keep pressing from top this diameter will increase and ultimately what will happen everything has to go and open inside the vestibule so this ampullary end and lateral semicircular canal ampullary end both will enter inside the vestibule then this is again same figure and we know what happens to the non ampullary end of the superior semicircular canal it will receive the non ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal both will form the common crust and both will enter inside the vestibule again what will happen to the non ampullary end it will open separately in the vestibule so whatever it is all the inner ear structures are ultimately are going to go inside the vestibule that is the basic anatomy the same anatomy you have to apply in the hrcd temporal bone so go in the topmost part of the temporal bone so if you are seeing from the top like top like this you will see it as a tubular structure in the beginning and then this both ends will get separated same thing you need to apply here i am going down now you are seeing the tubular structure here so this is the tubular structure if you go down you see both the ends got separated so anterior end is the ampullary end and posterior end is the non ampullary end so we'll concentrate now on the ampullary end so what will happen with the ampullary end its a diameter will increase so i'm going down still its diameter is same now you see it is dilating so this dilation is nothing but the ampullary end of the superior semicircular canal you keep tracing it down it will open in the vestibule and from there only it will start the ampullary end of the lateral semicircular canal lateral semicircular canal is the easiest semicircular canal to find out in the axial scan reason i told you in the beginning because the cut the axial cut which you are taking it is going exactly parallel to the lateral semicircular canal 
so this is the lateral semicircular canal ampullary end you trace it reverse this is the non ampullary end everything ultimately will open inside the vestibule so we saw what happened to the superior semicircular canal ampullary end what about the non ampullary end i shown you in that figure that it will receive the non ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal both will form the common crust and it will open inside the vestibule so keep concentrating on this part and going down now see you are getting one structure coming from here this is nothing but the non ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal both are joining here and where is the vestibule vestibule is somewhere here we already saw when we were tracing this so this structure now will start going anteriorly so if you go down see this structure is moving anteriorly see it is moving anteriorly and it has opened inside the vestibule so i'll come up again the non ampullary end of the superior semicircular canal non ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal both have formed the common crust and common crust is going anteriorly to open ultimately in the vestibule then we already got here the non ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal once you get this end you can just keep it tracing where this other end is going ultimately it has to be forming ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal so just keep tracing it tracing it you can see there is a dilation in this part so this is nothing but the ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal and what is it is doing ultimately it has gone and entered into the vestibule so superior semicircular canal we saw lateral we saw and posterior we saw next we'll see the internal auditory meatus more clearly so i always use negative window for this what happens if you use the negative window i myself find this structures more clear i don't know about others but i always find it easy to read this internal auditory meatus and especially facial nerve which becomes more easy to read if you use the negative window so here you can see nicely the internal auditory meatus you can see the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve which is in close approximation with the basal tone of cochlea when i come to cochlea i'll show you that is that is the basal tone then you are seeing another offshoot from here another offshoot this is nothing but the superior vestibular nerve then you keep coming down keep coming down you are seeing another structure is entering inside the cochlea so this is nothing but the cochlear nerve another structure is going inside the vestibule so it is inferior level so this is the inferior vestibular nerve and if you come up and try to find out there is one offshoot coming out from here you can see this is the internal auditory meatus and there is one offshoot coming out of here so you trace it where it is going you can see this offshoot see where it is going it's going towards the ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal so this is nothing but the singular nerve or you can say singular foramen because whatever we are seeing are all bony canals not the soft tissues for simplicity i am using the words like facial nerve or cochlear nerve or inferior vestibular nerve these are actually what we are seeing are the canals for those nerve like this is the singular foramen carrying the singular nerve so see even singular foramen you can make out very nicely if you use negative window i'll change it to now normal window see it becomes little difficult to find out this what is this structure but if you use the negative window it is more clear and even if you come to facial nerve see facial nerve labyrinthine segment then first genu then this dilation geniculate ganglion the horizontal segment is seen so nicely so particularly for the internal auditory meatus and uh, facial nerve the proximal part i feel negative window is more accurate accurate means more uh, uh, smoothing to eyes you can say so next we'll come to cochlea so cochlea by definition we know what is the promontory promontory is the projection of the cochlea the basal tone of cochlea in the middle ear 
so what you need to find you have to find the projection in the middle here so here at this level i am seeing only one projection see this projection into coming into the picture this is nothing but the basal turn of cochlea once you get basal turn of cochlea just keep tracing it up you will get the middle turn apical turn everything so middle turn apical turn and i told you that it was the basal turn which we saw in the relation with the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve you can see that this is a basal turn of cochlea just concentrate on basal turn of cochlea see it's going higher up and it is so big that in hrcd temporal bone whenever you see the axial scan first turn to appear is the basal turn and last turn to disappear is the basal turn of the cochlea the basal turn will be so much big so this is also basal turn and this is also basal turn and in between you'll get the medial turn and apical turn and you can see even the spongy bone that is the modulus here so we saw the cochlea we saw the vestibule so vestibule we know the roof of the vestibule is nothing but the foot plate so just keep searching the stapes and the vestibule at the junction of both you get the foot plate of the stapes so this is the foot plate foot plate of the stapes so vestibule cochlea foot plate of the stapes then once you get the foot plate of the stapes that is the oval window this is the oval window you keep going down keep going down you will get the round window so this round window is here this is promontory and higher up will be the oval window so oval window promontory and round window like this you can find it out next is cochlear aqueduct so i told you there are two extensions from the posterior fossa dura towards the otic capsule one is internal auditory meatus and second is the cochlear aqueduct so see here one structure is coming inside so this is nothing but the cochlear aqueduct so in this particular case because jugular bulb is very prominent it is obliterated here only even if jugular bulb would have been normal in 83% of the cases it will be obliterated in this bone and it will not reach to the round window the functioning of the cochlear aqueduct is said to be avoiding the pulsation dural pulsation towards the round window suppose if it is a patent and there is a cochlear aqueduct is not there the function of cochlear aqueduct itself is to reduce the pulsations of dura to the round window if it is not doing its function what will happen continuously over round window there will be bombarding of the dural pulsation so continuously will keep hearing dub 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 sound that is we are not hearing because the function of the cochlear aqueduct is said to be reducing the this dural pulsation towards the round window but it 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 is able to reach round window only in 13% of the cases 17% of the cases rest 83% it will get obliterated between this bone only then next we'll see the vestibular aqueduct so if you know the anatomy of the vestibular aqueduct vestibular aqueduct starts in the floor of the common crust and then from that part it will go in the posterior fossa dura where it will form the endolymphatic sac so this is the common crust where it was forming so you need to find out a parallel structure to this which is going to the posterior fossa dura that is nothing but the your vestibular aqueduct so i'll go down now see there is one structure coming into the picture which is going towards the posterior fossa dura so this is nothing but the vestibular aqueduct and this area will get the endolymphatic sac if you make it negative window again it is more calm more prominent you can see see this vestibular aqueduct coming and going and merging with the posterior fossa dura where it, in this area it will form the endolymphatic sac then we saw the medial end of the eustachian tube now we will see the lateral end of the eustachian tube so this is the eustachian tube orifice so if you know the anatomy of the eustachian tube the horizontal petrous carotid will be in the floor of the eustachian tube 
there will be another soft tissue in the roof of the uh, eustachian tube that is nothing but the tensor muscle so you can see here tensor muscle so if you want to trace tensor muscle just keep moving your arrow see this tensor muscle it's coming inside the middle ear and then it is taking a sharp turn to get attachment to the neck and a lower part of the head of the malleus so this is nothing but the tensor tendon and this is the tensor muscle which was there in the roof of the eustachian tube and in the floor will be the horizontal petrous carotid so this finishes the normal study of hrcd temporal bones axial cuts only how to read the coronal and sagittal cuts i am going to give study for you so i'll show you how to do that reconstruction now suppose you come at the level of uh, this ice cream cone this ice cream cone i want to see how it looks in the coronal cut and how it looks in the sagittal cuts what i'll do i'll select 3d mpr then i'll make it So I'll go and find where is the ice cream cone. This is the ice cream cone. Then I'll keep my cursor over the ice cream cone. Then I'll go and see how it looks in sagittal cuts. So this is how it looks in sagittal cuts. If you want to see in the coronal cuts, come to coronal cuts. so you can see here typical molar tooth appearance of the head of malleus and the body of incus in the coronal cuts then suppose you want to see how facial nerve looks in the coronal cuts again what i'll do i'll do the 3d mpr then you go to particular cut where you want to see the facial nerve i want to see vertical segment how it looks so what i'll do i'll go down so i know this is the vertical segment of the facial nerve i want to see how it looks in coronal cut so i'll go in coronal cut and see this is the vertical segment of the facial nerve you can trace it front and back i want to see it in sagittal then go to sagittal cuts so this is in the sagittal cut how it looks similarly if you want to see the internal carotid artery or jugular foramen jugular bulb again go the multiplanar 3d mpr select the area which you are interested in to see so i'll go down so i want to see this particular area how it looks so i'll go in coronal so you can see here nicely coronal the relationship between the cochlea basal turn and the internal carotid artery so this is the internal carotid artery internal carotid artery and basal turn of cochlea you can go anterior back side you can do then in this particular cut you can see the facial nerve the labyrinthine segment medially and the tympanic segment laterally so this is called the snake eye appearance of the facial nerve in the coronal cut then using this software you can even do the reconstructions of the different planes now we all know if you want to see the superior semicircular canal deviations you have to see in pole plane 
so pull explain how you can make out using this software go and identify the superior semicircular canal so i am at the level of superior semicircular canal keep your cursor and make it parallel to the superior semicircular canal and go in the sagittal cut so this is your pole plane you can see here nicely the superior semicircular canal so like this radiological softwares you can use so this i'll give you for study because it's not possible to cover everything the coronal sagittal again it will take another 2 to hours and you should have some uh, study material also along with you next is cone beam ct so cone beam ct we all of us know it's a very easy to do so this is video from youtube how this cone beam ct is taken you can take it actually in the sitting position So this is small audio i will show you i'll just stop the sound so this is a small video available on youtube not from our center or radiological center it is just from another center just for information i am showing this so you can see how easily it can be taken just in a one minute all the scan can be completed patient will be sitting comfortably and it will occupy only this much space you have to train one assistant how to do it that's all so it will make two rotations from left to right right to left and the scan is done so less radiation as compared to hrcd temporal bone so that is the only one advantage which i see i'll show you one cone beam also where you cannot manipulate so many things to see the soft tissues okay so this computer tomographic dose index that is ctdi of a ct scan of middle ear is around 170 milligrade and it is compared to cone beam ct it is only 15 to 30 milligrade so a lot of difference is there but the thing is that i'll show you the scan though it is good in one way the another way is uh, this Yeah, so somehow, uh, somewhat this uh, cone beam ct will be looking like this. So if you look this, uh, it looks great. The soft tissue details, you feel it's more, but I personally don't like cone beam ct because whatever I told you regarding this area, the soft tissue plane and everything, you see, it's not that much clear in cone beam. It's hardly you can make out where is the medial pterygoid, lateral pterygoid, where are the muscles. So the soft tissue details are difficult. Plus, if you are very used to see the HRCT temporal bone conventional, then it's become difficult to be happy with the cone beam CT scan. Cone beam looks something like this. So if your eyes are not well trained with cone beam CT scan, you may not like it. That was just to complete my lecture. So the homework here is for you is practice reading the normal HRCT temporal bone. Because next lecture, that is tomorrow only, I'm going to take on common pathologies involving temporal bone. You can directly WhatsApp me or can inform the organizers with pathologies should be covered. I'm going to cover this common pathology like cholesteatoma, keratosis obturans, fractures of temporal bone, otosclerosis, osteomyelitis calvis and paragonglomas that is glomus tumor. So this is my WhatsApp number and email ID. If you want to share some CDs or soft copy of the scan, 
you can share with me i always like to do that work currently also i am doing for many of people and i thankful to them because of uh, them i have got so much material now with me i am having almost around 500 scans with me which i have shown all the scans are all my personal scans i have not taken or copied it from anyone so i have collection of almost more than 500 scan different different scans and out of them almost 5 to 10% i can say are shared by others to me for uh, some opinion so i end my lecture here tomorrow morning 11 o'clock we'll meet again for the lecture on pathologies now if any questions are there uh, shri arsha and ramesh sir any questions are there sir we'll take questions sir yeah shri arsha tell me so and i mean uh, the there's nobody has posted in the chat section but we will open up uh, the, for the audience uh, okay so they can actually, type it now actually yeah and uh, this is the way i have learned the ct scan that's why i always tell that i am not uh, i am not a teacher to teach you all i am just a conveyor to tell you how to read the ct scan So the unmute uh, uh, option is enabled now. Anybody who wish to uh, uh, clear your doubts, you can unmute and uh, directly talk with the speaker. Hello, good evening, sir. Uh, thank you for the excellent presentation, sir. I am Dr. Dhruv Kapoor. I am a PG resident final year in Delhi. Uh, sir, could you please show the cochlear aqueduct once again? I missed that part because of network issues. Yeah, 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 yeah one minute. To share the screen. See, cochlear aqueduct. Basically, you need to understand it is the second extension from the posterior fossa dura towards the ear or middle ear or inner ear, whatever you want to say. I'll go back. One scan. So anyway, I'll open in this and you'll see. So. First extension we saw load. Yeah, so for here here in this particular scan you can see so nicely superior petrosal sinus also. This is superior petrosal sinus. The scan which I was showing there it was not there, but here it is very clear. Superior petrosal sinus. So what I was telling the first extension is the internal auditory matter and you need to find out similar structure at exactly similar angulation but it will be smaller in caliber so just keep going down keep going down see here one structure is coming this triangular structure this is nothing but the cochlear aqueduct and as i told you in 83 percent of the cases it will obliterate it in this bone it will not able to reach the round window so this is the cochlear aqueduct this is the second extension from posterior posa dura. It is connected to the basal turn of the cochlea. It it its a destination is till the basal, basal turn, turn of the cochlea and the round round window. But in eighty three percent of the cases, it will be obliterated, sir. Only in seventeen percent cases, actually, you can trace it going till the round window. Yes. Yes, sir. And uh, here another thing, a very nice uh, scan actually, I don't know. Now only I am observing. Have you observed this? See this extension. Are you feeling anything is abnormal in this? Yes, it is much, much bigger well, than yes. the diameter of the posterior semicircle canal. Yeah, yeah. So you can see this is actually nothing but the dilated vestibular aqueduct. It is actually yes. vestibular aqueduct, but it is dilated so much. So in this yes. case, this is the case of dilated vestibular aqueduct. If you see the diameter, you can just simply measure. See, it is almost more than 2.5, 2.5 mm. So this is the dilated vestibular aqueduct. Uh, normally, it is one millimeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be more or less than one millimeter. And what you correctly pointed out, sir, that is the almost the double the diameter than the posterior, posterior semicircle canal. 
Sir, is it going to the vestibule? Yeah, yeah, sir. It has to go actually. Track it. Press it. I'll just press it. Yeah, sir. Here. It has become small later. Yeah. But it's going, sir. It's moving. See, it's moving. Yeah. Yeah. It's going, yeah. sir. It's going till the going up to the vestibule. Yeah, yeah. But it Stop is small. And Dr. Madhusudan. Sir, how are you, sir? Madhusudan, sir. Nice to Right, sir. You. From, <laughs> from the first minute of this presentation, I am still keenly watching. Really a wonderful presentation. Thank you. But uh, uh, only one doubt for me is yes, what is the pathological importance of cochlear aqueduct? Sir, cochlear aqueduct actually, cochlear aqueduct, dilated cochlear aqueduct is very much controversial topic, sir. It has been reported in few cases, yes. but it is not very uh, particularly said that there is such entity like dilated cochlear aqueduct. As vestibular cochlear aqueduct, we say dilatation in much uh, many of the inner ear anomalies, yes. but like that cochlear yes. aqueduct has not been that much mentioned, sir, in the literature. And there is a debate over okay. whether there is actually such entity or not, dilated cochlear aqueduct. Any importance uh, Madhu, regarding cochlear implant? That uh, Madhu, Meghna. Uh, this cochlear aqueduct, may, uh, that uh, maybe I think 13, 14 percent, you will see bony aqueduct. Okay. But there is no continuation. Yeah, sir, that's what. Yes. There is no yes. continuation of the CSF fluid. Yeah, signal. yeah, yeah, sir. And even if you see a little dilatation, sir, at the level of the posterior posa dura, what Meghna sir okay. is ruling is correct, sir. It will get obliterated in between that bone and it will yeah. not reach okay. up to the round window. That's why there is a no chance of CSF leak in those cases also. Uh, we, we, are, we have started doing implant. That's why the radiological... Uh, mentioning will be there in sometimes. Yes. There is uh, cochlear aqueduct is very prominent. I just want to know as a radiological finding, is there any significance for a no. surgical anatomical point for implant surgery? Yeah, yeah, sir. No. In that case, the answer is no. Yeah, yeah, yeah sir. Answer and is no. In that case, thank you, Mignat. Yeah, and in that case, sir, even if they have mentioned it is dilated cochlear aqueduct, simply you can see yes. it, sir, whether it is reaching to round window or not. If it is not reaching to round window, you are not uh, worried about it then, because you are not. It is not coming in your surgical field. Now the next question is: the dilated vestibular aqueduct has any surgical importance for implant surgeon Meghnath? Because you are my boss and having yes, enormous yes, experience. Yes. And I think Nilesh, Nilesh will. Uh... Sir, definitely Nilesh. vestibular aqueduct. If it is dilated, and you have to uh, see whether it is reaching to the vestibule or not, sir. Again, the same thing okay. you have to see. If it is reaching to the vestibule, sir, then there is a high chance of uh, gusher when you are doing the cochlear implant, sir. So no, in sir. that no, case, no. you have to be there. Uh, Nilesh, Nilesh. Yes, no, sir. no. It, no, it doesn't cause gusher. At yes, the most, sir, what sir. it will do is you will have a pulsatile. Uh, continuous pulsatile discharge. Pulsatile. Yeah, yeah. Only yeah, pulsatile. Yeah, open the pulsatile. You will yeah. have a pulsatile yeah. fluid yes. when you open fluid. the cochlea. Yeah. There won't be gusher. Yes. The yeah, gusher means, yeah, sir. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, but that also we can block, no, sir, with soft tissue. Yes. Ah, of course. Yeah, that, yeah. That's not at all an issue at all. Yes, if yes. there is a gusher means, there is a connection between the cochlea and internal artery meatus somewhere, there is a bone dehiscence is there. Yeah. This can be in the region of the apical tongue <coughs> or it can be in the region of the Cochlear aperture. These are the two sites where there is a possibility of bony dehiscence or a deficiency by which the CSF is having a communication. Yes, sir. Yes. And probably that communication also could be the cause for the sensory neural deafness. Uh, can I ask another question, Neelesh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's the percentage of vestibular? Dilatation as an anatomical finding, nothing uh, to do with pathology. Very How sir. often you see a dilated vestibule? Unless there is any associated inner ear anomaly, sir, you can say it is uh, not significant, yes. nil significant, sir. Suppose uh, you just uh, sent for a CSOM, 
yeah. full seat to mastoid surgery. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you see a dilated vestibule. Does yeah, yeah. surgeon should give any importance? No, dilated vestibule, sir, means you have to be careful, sir, that it has cholestatum or whatever disease is there. It is not in connection with directly that dilated vestibule. Plus, all these cases, sir, they will have some or other inner ear anomalies also. So, you have to be careful whether patient is yes. associated. Ah, yes, sir, so, you should be or, concentrating on inner ear anomalies. Yes, yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Correct, sir. Uh, tomorrow at 11 o'clock, can we have, because I am having another uh, very social meeting, can I browse it later, Nilesh? Uh, I think Sri Arsha can tell you regarding that, sir. Sri Arsha? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can uh, still send, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please give me that uh, fortunate, uh, <laughs> to opportunity yeah. for people yeah, like me. Plan. Tomorrow, yeah, uh, 11.30, I am having a meeting, uh, which is unavoidable, so that I can't miss Nilesh lecture. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much, sir. <laughs> now also I'm sir, traveling with the YouTube. Yeah, we enjoy. Telangana YouTube. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Nilesh. Wonderful you. experience. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Nilesh. Thank you, Nilesh, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nilesh. Thank you, thank you, Sudip, sir. Nice to see you. Yeah, great. Uh, as, as usual, at Telangana State Conference also, your presentation on autosclerosis was very good. And yes, today sir. was. Thank you, sir. Any more doubts, sir? There are many questions uh, in the chat box. I think we can, uh, Nilesh can answer it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah sir. Yeah, I will okay. just go through that chat box. And yeah. I'll see if I, corpo I can incorporate it, uh, incorporate well. in my lecture room. Sir, thank you, Meghna. Sir, sir, thank you, Meghna. Thank you, Sudhir, for giving us the opportunity to listen to Dr. Nilesh. Thank you, you very much. much very, very, so very, kind of very, thank very you, interesting sir. also. <laughs> very, very interesting. Thank you, sir. sir. Thank, you. thank you, sir. Sir, one request, sir. Yeah, yeah. If you have time, can you, can you act as a moderator for tomorrow's session, sir? Will be very useful for us. Me? Yes, sir. Yeah, you sir. Oh, oh, tomorrow I, I have some later. appointment at yes, 11 yes. o'clock. Huh? I will ah, be able okay, to. Okay, sir. In future, we will utilize your services, sir. As a faculty, as a moderator. No, uh, I have a, an appointment which I gave long back. No problem, and sir. Otherwise, no problem, I love sir. to be there. Yes, sir. Yes. In no problem. Session, We'll invite you in the in advance. We, we, we will do a separate. Oh, definitely. definitely, no problem. I'm always there. Thank you, sir. I'm Thank always so there much, to sir. learn. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh. Thank you. Yes, Thank, you Thank you. Anyway, Thank you, sir. all the participants and uh, faculty. Yeah. Anything more, sir? Sudip, sir, please. Hello, Nilesh, sir. Sudip, yes, yes. Uh, I'm Dr. Rakesh from Surat. Ah, sir, Rakesh, sir, uh, Sir, uh, it has been an excellent talk, and I never miss your talk whenever I get a link. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Sir, I have an unusual request. Ah, sir. Sir, uh, can you correlate uh, your CT finding with uh, endoscopic uh, ear findings? Is it possible? Yeah, sir, we always do that. See, actually, I forgot to tell. Scan, you have to read three times, sir. First, before the surgery. Second is during the surgery. And third is after the surgery. So that yes, you sir. can correlate it with. Suppose if you yes, are sir. seeing the lateral semicircular canal fistula in the scan, when you are yes. operating surgery, then you have to see, sir, whether it is towards the dome or it is towards the ampullary end of the lateral semicircular canal. You have to correlate yes. with the your CT scan yes. finding. And even after yes. scan also, you can see whether your surgical and uh, CT scan findings were correlating or not. Right. Sir. And anyway, sir, tomorrow I'll be telling that anterior place sinus, everything that time will come to know. Okay. No, sir, in endoscopic, they mention a lot about hostess and uh, sub cochlear canaliculus. Oh, so many details in a CT scan you will not able to see, sir, like QTs yes, sir. or subcochlear canaliculus. Yes. Anyway, subcochlear canaliculus, it's okay, you can trace, but uh, to trace QTs, because QTs, yes. you have to trace from the round window, and you saw the round window, how much small it was looking in the scan. Yes, yes. So, 
or right, to right. for beauties or you can take funiculus also funiculus yeah, yeah, yeah. you can trace if you try to trace jacobson nerve then you can get yeah. funiculus but then yeah. those things becomes too much complicated and not uh, right. good for the basic lecture no. so you are the best person to um, make those are complicated things uncomplicated <laughs> thank you thank you sir thank you sir dr nilesh yes sir sir if you want to see all these things you have to do very very high resolution ct scan yes and sir. then that will give unnecessary radiation to the patient and you will, we may not get any benefit clinically but yes yeah, sir there are semi many structures described in the literature but are they useful practically my answer my understanding is only few are useful practically many are uh, yeah, for yeah. the anatomist right. true sir may not be for an autology surgeon yeah yeah okay thank you hello thank you everyone thank you and uh, good night dr nilesh thank you thank you very much and uh, ramesh thank you sir yes sir Mr. Sir, shall we end the session, sir? We will start again. Yeah, yeah, you can end. Sir, you can end the session. Sir, Nilesh, sir, thank you, sir. We will again uh, see you tomorrow. Yes, yes. Tomorrow morning, eleven o'clock. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bye, sir. Okay, bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night, everyone. Thank you bye, for sir. attending.